Hi everyone, Miss Klingen here and you're joining me for the last part of the book SEO Trot. Can you remember what's happened previously? I hope so. It's building up very suddenly to an end. So let's see what happens in the next part. Mr Hoppy suddenly felt very brave. Mrs Silver, he said, do you think I could pop down to your balcony and hold Alfie myself? Why, of course you can, Mrs Silver cried. Come down at once. Mr Hoppy rushed down the stairs and Mrs Silver opened the door to him. Together they went out onto the balcony. Just look at him, Mrs Silver said proudly. Isn't he grand? He's a big, good-sized tortoise now, Mr Hoppy said. And you did it. Mrs Silver cried. You're a miracle man. You are indeed. But what am I going to do about his house? Mrs Silver said. He must have a house to go into at night, but now he can't get through the door. They were standing out on the balcony looking at the tortoise, who was trying to push his way into his house, but he was too big. I shall have to enlarge the door, Mrs Silver said. Don't do that. Mr Hobby said, you mustn't go chopping up such a pretty little house. After all, he only needs it he only needs to be just a tiny bit smaller, and he could still get in easily. How can he possibly get smaller? Mrs Silver asked. That's simple, Mr Hobby said. Change the magic words. Instead of telling him to get bigger and bigger, tell him to get a bit smaller. But in tortoise language, of course. Will that work? Of course it will work. Tell me exactly what I have to say, Mr Hoppy. Mr Hoppy got out a piece of paper and a pencil and wrote, SEO trot, SEO trot, take a tib relams, a tib relams. That'll do it, Mr. S Mrs Silver, he said, handing her the paper. I don't mind trying it, Mrs Silver said, but look here, I wouldn't want him to get titchy small all over again, Mr Hoppy. He won't, dear lady, he won't, Mr Hoppy said. Say it only tonight and tomorrow morning, and then see what happens. We might be lucky. If it works, Mrs Silver said, touching him softly on the arm, then you are the cleverest man alive. The next afternoon, as soon as Mrs Silver had gone to work, Mr Hoppy lifted the tortoise up from her balcony and carried it inside. All he had to do now was to find one that was a shade smaller so that it would just go through the door of the little house. He chose one and lowered it down with his tortoise catcher. Then, still gripping the tortoise, he tested it to see if it would go into the door. It wouldn't. He chose another. Again, he tested it. This one went through nicely. Good. He placed the tortoise in the middle of the balcony beside a nice piece of lettuce and went inside to await Mrs Silver's homecoming. That evening, Mr Hoppy was watering his plants on the balcony when suddenly he heard Mrs Silver's shout from below, shrill with excitement. Mr Hoppy, Mr Hoppy, where are you? She was shouting. Just look at this. Mr Hoppy popped his head over the railing and said, What's up? Oh, Mr Hoppy, it worked, she was crying. Your magic words have worked again on Alfie. He can now get through the door of his little house. It's a miracle. Can I come down and look? Mr Hoppy shouted back. Come down at once, my dear man, Mrs Silver answered. Come down and see the wonders you have worked from my darling Alfie. Mr Hoppy turned and ran from the balcony into the living room, jumping on tiptoe like a ballet dancer between the sea of tortoises that covered the floor. He flung open his front door and flew down the stairs two at a time with the love songs of a thousand cupids ringing in his ears. This is it, he whispered to himself under his breath. The greatest moment of my life is coming up now. It mustn't bish it. I mustn't bosh it. I must keep very calm. When he was three quarters way down the stairs, 
he caught sight of Mrs. Silver already standing at the open door, waiting to welcome him, with a huge smile on her face. She flung her arms around him and cried out, You really are the most wonderful man I've ever met. You can do anything. Come in at once and let me make you a cup of tea. That's the very least you deserve. Seated in a comfortable armchair, in Mrs. Silver's parlour, sipping his tea, Mr. Hoppy was all of a twitter. He looked at the lovely lady sitting opposite him and smiled at her. She smiled right back at him. That smile of hers, so warm and friendly, suddenly gave him the courage he needed, and he said, Mrs. Silver, please will you marry me? Why, Mr. Hoppy, she cried, I didn't think you'd ever get round to asking me. Of course I'll marry you. Mr. Hoppy got rid of his teacup, and the two of them stood up and embraced warmly in the middle of the room. It's all due to Alfie, Mrs. Silver said, slightly breathless. Good old Alfie, Mr. Hoppy said. We'll keep him forever. The next afternoon, Mr. Hoppy took all of his other tortoises back to the pet shops. And they could have... And they said they could have them for nothing. Then he cleaned up his living room, leaving not a leaf of cabbage nor a trace of tortoise. A few weeks later, Mrs. Silver became Mrs. Hoppy, and the two of them lived very happily ever after. P.S. I expect you're wondering what happened to little Alfie, the first of them all. Well, he was bought a week later from one of those pet shops by a small girl called Roberta Squib, and he settled down in Roberta's garden. Every day she fed him lettuce and tomato slices and crispy celery, and in the winters he hibernated in a box of dry leaves in the tool shed. That was a long time ago. Roberta has grown up and is now married and has two children of her own. She lives in another house, but Alfie is still with her, still much-loved family pet, and Roberta reckons that by now he must be about 30 years old. It has taken him all that time to grow to twice the size he was when Mrs Silver had him, but he made it in the end. <laughs> what a lovely end of the book! Oh my goodness though, I don't think I'd be able to have a relationship or a friendship with someone based on a lie. What do you think? I'm not sure how I feel about Mr Hoppy. I hope you enjoyed that book, I really really enjoyed reading it to you. And I hope you watched all of the parts previous to now as well, so that you got the full story. Join me next time, everyone, for another wonderful book. I hope you will enjoy it just as much as I do. But until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy, as always. And I'll see you then. Bye!